Welcome, Age of Vintage Society. Actor, singer and stuntman, Robert Conrad was no doubt the ladies' man with his regular tough man screen tricks that enticed old and young and kept thousands of American TV viewers baffled within the late 1960s. As dangerous as his daring stunts are with those piercing blue eyes, he was ready to do more each time, making himself the Superman that everyone should be afraid of, on and off the screen, though he soon realises that being a showman did not make him the biggest sheriff in town. Why Robert Conrad knocked someone with his shoe! As you all know how much I appreciate you, my viewers, so I want to thank you for your generous comments and for the Patreons. This video would not have been possible without you, and thanks to those who watched the video right to the end. Robert Conrad, from famous TV stunts to street fighting. Robert Conrad was always our favourite actor growing up. My mother had a big crush on him. We were all fans of Wild Wild West and any screen we saw him in. A passionate fan recalled the sensational performances of classic TV star Robert Conrad. He was tough, grew tough, lived tough, and experienced toughness till his tragic death. Conrad made himself popular as a tough fella through his superheroic stunts in the sequence of the Wild Wild West show and a few other movies that had his wonderful displays. He was said to have famously performed his stunts with extra passion than the roughest of stuntmen. He did not just act, he got himself a reputation as a powerful dude not to be messed with, a reputation that observers say followed him off the screen. Wild Wild West, which aired on CBS between 1965 and 1969, is a TV western adventure show that incorporated multiple action scenes in every of its episodes with Conrad at the centre of those activities. The decision to carry out those stunts weekly by a lead actor critics think was too risky, since the show could run into trouble if anything goes wrong in the process, and the producers felt the same when they kicked against it, but Conrad insisted that he would do it, not minding the possible downturn that would amount to a huge loss of money in overcharges if the program ends suddenly. While doing most of this stunt work, he got injured severely. During the filming of a particular episode, he was reported to have skidded off a platform while executing a stunt, and had landed on a concrete floor twelve feet below with his head. The fall got him seriously injured, and that incident delayed the production of the episode while he underwent a recovery process for almost three months. Did Conrad abandon his singing talent for a more exciting fighting show? He was seen as a man who couldn't escape his strongman persona, but was quick to go into hiding when the police needed him to answer a question. It was reported that in 1971 some men in Florida alleged that this model TV personality assaulted them with a shoe. Was it the reason he was said to have avoided the police? You have not heard the last about this two-fisted TV icon and his wild talent that was felt in the entertainment scene from 1953 up to 2019. Bob, as he was fondly called, made fans admire the job of a secret agent in a television series that depicted James Bond-style actions in an Old West scenery, attracting to himself thousands of fans and sympathisers who were thrilled with his performances. It does appear as if Conrad wanted much more than he was getting while his career climaxed at the time. Was it also the reason he was said to have found major satisfaction in later performances in more significant roles, like the fur trader he depicted in the Centennial series of the late 1970s? In the Battle of the Network Stars, sometime in 1976, Conrad and Gabe Kaplan were said to have engaged in a notorious showdown. At the time, Conrad represented the NBC team captain, while Kaplan stood for ABC team captain. A dispute did occur over the winner of an event. It got Conrad so angry that he lost his temper, pacing furiously and saying he wouldn't agree to it that the opposite team had won. He may have been on the wrong day, or that he underestimated his opponent when he offered to challenge Kaplan as team captain. He wanted them to do a race, and the winner automatically won the event for their team. But to his dismay, Kaplan defeated him easily, while he gaped in silly. It would be an understatement to say that Conrad won the heart of women, because his fearlessness and good looks is a credit that no one can take away from him. 
A brief check about him online shows that about 70% of his passionate fans are women. Did he also carry them along off-camera? His romantic journey began early in life, just as his childhood journey was not free from stiffness. As a teenager, Conrad was said to have lied to get a job at the age of 17. Soon he could not wait to do the needful romantically, as he eloped with a lawyer's daughter from her faith-based boarding school, in what was described as a fantasy romance that later became a reality. After that incident, he and his wife lived in their location under the self-styled name Robert Conrad, so both parents would not identify and trace easily. That was how he twisted his name that today became the trademark that his fans know him with. He was born Conrad Robert Falk in Chicago on the 1st of March 1935 by Leonard Henry Falk of German descent, who was a teenager when he impregnated Alice Jacqueline Hartman, his mother, and at the time of his birth his father Leonard was just 17 while his mother was 15. His teenage mother found him worthy to name Conrad after her father. It was not clear why he attended multiple high schools at different times in Chicago, but he ended up dropping out of school when he was 15 and commencing a full-time menial job. Coming from teenage parents, Conrad may have followed his parents' footsteps by having an early start in life, but not knowing that age is also an obstacle at some point in life. He was ready for work, and so the best place a miner like him could get a job, with attractive pay at the time, was the loading docks in Chicago, where he told the recruiter that he was 21, and was said to have made $1.87 hourly and about $74.40 weekly income. The journey was good, the money was coming in, and so young Robert Conrad thought it wise to find a wife for himself, and so when he was smitten by young and beautiful Joan Kenlay, he did not hesitate to abscond with her. The two lovers were said to have hidden from the radar of their parents until his wife discovered that she was pregnant in May of 1952. Perhaps they were happy because it would have been too late for their parents to kick against their marriage, but the good thing is that the couple stayed together for 25 years with five kids before divorcing in 1977. After working in Chicago for many years and acquiring knowledge about theatre arts at Northwestern University, Conrad shifted his focus towards an acting career. His earliest income from showbiz was a week-long job of posing outside a Chicago movie house where the film Giant was screened in 1956. Being that his mother was connected in the entertainment industry, she was able to link Conrad to the role which was a publicity stunt designed to create awareness that will attract more theatre attendance. When Conrad met actor Nick Adams in 1957, they too became pals. Adam was said to have advised him to come over to California for an acting opportunity, where he helped him with a bit role in the 1958 Juvenile Jungle. It was significant because it enabled him to become a member of the Screen Actors Guild. Conrad got his first movie contract with Warner Brothers, even though he released several songs, including Bye Bye Baby, which became a minor Billboard success song, reaching number 113 on the chart. His movie career was as interesting as his usual show of force lifestyle. Sometime in 1971, he desired to go back to TV as the star of a fresh Jack Webb show known as The D.A., to create awareness, Conrad appeared on Adam 12 in two crossover events, initially appearing in The Radical, where Adam 12 fans were awed by Conrad's fresh and excruciating character. He was belted up as the district attorney Paul Ryan, the astonishment stern from the fact that they were used to seeing him throw practical blows, rather than the much quiet role of a court officer. Interestingly, Conrad argued that the part was okay for him, just like any other role he has played before. I feel like a barrister when I wear a suit, and I feel very capable, he had said. Analysts think that he is one actor who couldn't stand any actor performing a role he knew he could do more effectively, a feeling that unfortunately kept him coming back to acting. Something he later admitted when he told the media that it was his ego that prevented him from not coming back again after retiring. He predicted that the DA show will last for four years, telling his fans that we'll have a big hit, adding that like other web series, the DA factored on real crime cases that will be incredibly interesting for audiences than invented plots. 
Regrettably, Conrad's prediction failed to live up to expectations as the DA ended with just its first season. Conrad, though discouraged, was quick to shift the blame, telling anyone who cares to listen that the show may have failed partly because everywhere fans see him, they expect him to play the tough guy role. Even when they see him on the street, they forget that movie is different from reality each time people want to see him in action. Sometimes this kind of expectation turns negative for him, as he once told a reporter in 1974 that he had been regularly assaulted by wise guys in public, making him expose the fact that the tough guy TV star he was on screen is different from his true nature, even though his teeming fans never believed. Reports have it that a fight broke out that year when some boys in Fort Lauderdale suggested that Conrad knocked one of them in the head with his shoe, though Conrad denied being involved in any fighting scenario or related incident later. It appeared that he hurriedly whisked himself away from the scene before the police came in. I do not hit anyone in the head with a shoe, he had explained, adding that as a martial artist he knew easier ways to do such a thing if he wanted to engage some folks in a fight. At the time of the interview there was an ongoing lawsuit, so he couldn't disclose much about the incident, but investigation shows that the trouble started when the men gridlocked Conrad's path with their vehicle and hauled insulting words at the star. At first Conrad thought it was the usual encounter that he always had with overzealous fans, but it wasn't as the abusive words are just something I've had to learn to live with, he had said, but when the situation worsened he knew he had to get a cover for himself before anything else. Conrad had claimed that his friend who was a bandit had been involved in the incident. I have a friend who is a well-known bandit, he had said as he defended himself against the physical attack. He told me when this happened he was shocked because he knew I wasn't violent, he had added. But still, no one can take it away from Conrad, who already knows long ago how to repel different kinds of street aggression. Growing up, he played football and sang in the choir. It was a period he got a lot of hooligan bullying, especially among his teammates. He once recalled how he was able to get his way amongst the toughest of them. Every time one of them backs kidded me because I sang in the choir, I practically hit them a little harder he said, noting that he was the toughest singing linebacker they ever met. He stated that his reputation as the strongest young man then made him put up with a gang in Chicago that saw law enforcement officers like Adam-12 officers as enemies. All these made a writer describe him as one born on the wrong side of the paths on Chicago's tough south side. What else can one expect from a man who was born tough, grew tough as a kid, by loading and driving trucks? and took his toughness to the movies. No wonder everyone saw it as an irony that he was cast in the DA as an attorney. Quite a tale of a man who put so much of himself into every part he played in movies. About the wild, wild west that defined his trademark as the man to watch out for, Robert Conrad said that unfortunately the show could not continue because of the level of violence in it. At the time there seemed to be concerned groups influencing the network to reduce the fighting scenes, particularly that of the Saturday morning shows that probably would have lots of kids watching them. With all its noises the show ended in the fourth year, even as it never made the top 30 throughout its runs, and would have been more costly to continue production. Conrad's reputation as a hitman knew no boundary. Appearing as Bob Conrad, he was said to have defeated Ed Hickman on points, during a six-round professional boxing bout. He also made an unbeatable professional boxing record of 4 0 1. In 2003, Conrad was involved in a deadly car crash that saw him doing a head-on collision with another car and was lucky to be alive, though not without head injuries and neurological harm that paralysed his right arm and affected his vocals. He was thereafter convicted of driving under an influence and punished with six months of house arrest, five years of probation, plus alcohol counselling services. The incident also made the authorities withdraw his driver's licence for a year. Though he was married twice, Conrad had a decent relationship with women, unlike most Hollywood actors. Commenting on that, he once took a slap at co-stars when he said, "'There are men who need several women to bolster their egos.' even when half of the time they do not remember the lady's name afterward. But I've got a good ego. I'm too sensitive for a quick affair with a woman. 
Sex alone would never be enough for me. Marriage, he said, is something that is beyond the flesh. Robert Conrad died of heart failure on the 8th of February 2020, when he turned 84. Robert Conrad was tough, grew tough, lived tough, but not everybody in Hollywood had this level of confidence. How was Rosalind Russell's confidence damaged by the studios? Watch this video.